Hey guys, I could uh, probably go on with this Nehemiah thing for several more days. I'm going to just try to wrap it up today. Uh, weekend's coming. I'm excited. I get to go see King Kong tonight. What? It's uh, it's pretty, it's going to be a good day. Um, I just want to just, hopefully you, you've been watching these and uh, been reading through the book of Nehemiah. Maybe even hit Esther as well. Um, Ezra, rather, as well. And... Uh, you know, it, it just just to kind of recap, even though we're a, a small group, like the group that Nehemiah brought back, God can do incredible things to a small group and make an impact in people's lives that they'll be talking about for years to come, that they'll, you know, that, that'll, that'll change a generation. So we want to be involved in that. It doesn't matter, you know, if we got, you know, five people, 50 people, 500 people, 5,000 people, God can do incredible things. So let's take the opportunity that he's given us and get to work. Also, I hope you're responding in prayer and everything. If we don't bring God into this, our, our work is worthless. So if we're working alongside God and responding in prayer, everything, praying to Him for change lives, praying to Him for salvations, praying to Him for, for growth and new families and, and bigger impact and expanded territory, that's what's going to make the difference. And don't get distracted. We're doing a great work. Strap on your sword every morning. The enemy's going to be attacking. He's going to be trying to, to get you to look over here, get you to go over here, get you to take a, a break, get you to pause the work. Don't, don't, don't get distracted. You're doing a great work. Do not come down. And just a, one, a couple, a couple of last things that I see in uh, the book of Nehemiah is they had this great revival there i think it's really cool it says that um that that uh they ezra in, in the book of nehemiah ezra gets up and it says he he reads the book of the law it says um he, he brought the book of the law in, ver, in chapter 8 verse 2 brought the book of law before the assembly and it says he read it aloud from daybreak until noon talk about long-winded okay if, uh, if you can't sit through a 30-minute sermon, uh, then it would have been hard to listen to Ezra. But he read it from daybreak till noon. It says, all the people lifted their hands and they said, amen, amen. I mean, I, I hope that's how we're responding. I mean, if, if they can respond with amen, amen, when he reads from daybreak till noon, so surely we can respond with lifted hands and amen, amen, when we get into the presence of God for an hour. Um, I, I want us to, to be excited about it. It says they he read from the they read from the book of the law and they made it clear so that they understood the meaning. But here's here's the thing that I want you to see. It says that uh, in the in the end of chapter 18, I encourage you to read this. It says day after day from the first day to the last for seven straight days. It says Ezra read from the book of the law of God. So every day for seven days they were reading every day of the week. They read the book of the law. They read God's word every single day. And they celebrated this festival for seven days. And then it says, that's the end of chapter 8. In the beginning of chapter 9, it says that they gathered together fasting, wearing sackcloth, and putting dust on their heads. Now, that may sound really silly, but what that means is they're responding. That was their method of responding in repentance. They had heard God's word. They said, Hey, you know what? We've fallen short. We've missed out on some things. We've not done the things. We've not obeyed God, and we've not been faithful to Him. And so they repent. They fast. They seek God, wearing sackcloth, showing that they're they're repentant, and putting dust on their heads, showing that they're mourning over their own sin. It says they confessed, confessed their sin, and that led to an incredible revival. If we want revival in our church, it's going to take day after day getting into God's Word. Because here's, here's the last thing I want you to see. In, in uh, chapter 12, it starts talking about this, this huge revival they, uh, that, that they had. They just get excited about everything that God has done. They look at how God has blessed them, God has blessed their work. They weren't distracted. They were just a small group. They were praying. God's answering their prayers. They're reading God's word. They're repenting. And it ends up with this right here. It says in uh, chapter 12, verse 43, it says that they were rejoicing because God had given them great joy. Everybody's rejoicing. It says the sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. Can I rejoice? Can I worship? service 
be heard in your workplace on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Can it be heard in your family every day of the week? Can it be heard far away? Can it be heard in the lives of those people that don't even come to our church because you're in their life? Is that worship something that lasts all week long? I want I want what's happening in Brand New Church to affect not just that building and that room on Sunday morning. I want it to affect everywhere that we go, every person that we touch, every life that we're involved in. I want the sound of the rejoicing at Brand New Church Mount Home to be heard far away because we're not distracted, because we're doing great work, because we're in God's Word and allowing Him to just invigorate us to touch the lives of people that need Jesus so badly. I'm excited about what God's going to do. I was thinking about Bring Two. Bring Two wasn't two weeks ago or whenever it was. Bring Two is every single Sunday we ought to be bringing two people to church. Who are you doing this week? I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Thank you for watching these videos. Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for doing this work with me. It's a great work, and I'm glad to be doing it.